16, verses 13 to 18. I will read in your hearing. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Here ended a portion of God's holy word. You may be seated. task is mine this morning to introduce to you the speaker of the hour. For the local congregation here, he's no stranger. In fact, he's well known among us. But for the sake of our friends who have taken time out to visit us online, who might not be familiar with the speaker, I just want to say to you today that we appreciate you taking the time out to worship with us. And we do open trust that your worship experience will be of such that it will help you to make it to the kingdom of God. Our speaker is more than qualified for this position. In fact, I will, not be, I will not go down the road to tell you about all his academical achievements, but what I want to tell you is that over the years, he's a man of God, one who has dedicated his life in the service of God, and also to see souls born for the kingdom of God. Pastor Blake is here this morning, and we're happy for him, and we trust and hope that as he comes to speak to us, that your hearts will be receptive to receive a message from the Lord. And I pray and, and ask you also to breathe the word of prayer in your hearts. Help the, lift up the prophet's hand so that as he stand between God and man, he will deliver the thus saith the Lord. May your hearts be receptive to receive the word of God today as it is, is being presented to us. However, before Pastor Blake comes to us, the song of meditation will be rendered by Elder Mackin. God bless you. When he is promised to defend you and go with you to the end, only I look, only I look can turn. And comfort eternal, eternal life to win. Only a look at Jesus, for He. Only I look, 
Remove every spot of self right now. Help that when I speak, I'll truly be the messenger. That I will be the channel through which you speak. And I will convey your message as you have directed. Bless us, we pray. Forgive us of all our sins. And save us into thy eternal kingdom at last, we pray. In Jesus' name. why I love my church. Last week I heard Pastor issue a disclaimer before he preached. I would like to issue a disclaimer. I don't want anybody to question me or ask me about anything that I say in this sermon. Because this sermon is about my life. I was born for 62 years ago. My father, Roy Blake, was not a man of God. In fact, he was a womanizer. <laughs> womanizer. He also smoked, chain smoked. One cigarette lighting another cigarette. He did this for most of his life. But at the end, praise God, he turned his life over to God. My mother too was not very bright. She dedicated her life to serving the man who she married and me. She cooked, she cleaned, she organized when everything was out of order. And she did everything possible for us to survive and be alive. My mother was a chain smoker too. But praise be to God, before she died, she gave her life to Christ. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because I want you to understand that the man before you was not the man then. <laughs> the man before you is a complete changed man. I was born in a home that did not know God. I was born in a home with negative vibes. So you would expect that I would grow up with negative vibes. I grew up a young man wild. Wild. Pastor made reference to the fact that I was a Rastafarian. I was a dreadlocks. But might as well. I did everything possible that you can think about. I went to the latest dance hall. <laughs> the latest DJ were my heroes. I made a mess of my life. But my parents, although they were not godly, they believed in education. Catch it, catch it, catch it. So they insisted that I go to school and I did well. <laughs> I didn't do so well at the beginning. <laughs> My complete first years were a waste of life. I was doomed for failure. In fact, according to one of my teachers, I was a worthless chap. Worthless, never to be anything in life. And she looked as she said the word with scorn upon me. So in my mind, I was destined for no good. When I moved to Spanish Town after being born in Kingston, 
I went to one of the worst places I can think about. Pastor no Carl's Road. Most of you don't know Carl's Road. <laughs> but I didn't just live in Carl's Road. I live at the bottom of Carl's Road. I live in what they call Big Nala. It was the dungeon. It was the bottom of the well. But I don't know, my father went and built his house there. <laughs> I can't believe it. But coming from Tivoli Gardens where we were living, that was heaven for him. He built a big house, concrete house, in the house with all the fittings they can't think about. Modern kitchen. Bathroom well suited out. Rooms well suited out. Four bedrooms. Big house. So for a time we were on top of the bottom. I don't understand what I mean. We were the top of the bottom. That's where I grew up. My friends were all bad. Well, no, pardon, pardon. Some were bad and some were good. When I say bad, I mean bad. Most of my friends are now dead. Are in jail. Dead are in jail. And the few friends I had who were Seventh day Adventists, praise God, <laughs> live just be beside me. And they exerted a certain influence on me. Just a certain influence. They never bothered me about church because they couldn't bother me because every Friday night I would put on my music <laughs> and rock the brain. So, so they, they didn't talk to me about God, but, but they shed a certain influence. And gradually, it started to impact on me. I don't hear anybody saying amen. That influence impacted me even though you couldn't tell me anything about that. But it did. So when they invited me to come and listen to a concert, I said yes. <laughs> I, mean. I knew I had to go to dance later on. I had to go to session later on. But I still went. I went and listened to the singing. And the singing, man, the singing was unbelievable. I, I never see people go and sing so. The singing was different. The singing was unique. And it seemed like everybody in the church could sing. <laughs> impacted me. And so I went to the house and went to my usual life, but still there was something bothering me. It was on a regular Sabbath, regular Saturday, when I was coming from playing football, playing dominoes, and rapping with my friends. When on the train, I had this feeling. It came in the form of a question. Young man, do you believe in God? I said, where did the question come from? <laughs> no preacher on the train. Nobody, nobody no witness to me. Oh, where did it come from? Do you believe in God? I, I, I had to say yes. I do. I couldn't say no. 
even though I hated church, even though I couldn't stand the hypocrites in church, even though anybody near church come near me is worries, trouble. Can I would rather tell them about them past and play music and kill them. Chase those crazy ballers out of town. <laughs> Do you believe in God? I say yes. Then the second question. If you believe in God, why don't you serve him? <laughs> this is me reason with myself. There's nobody talking to me. There's nobody preaching to me. Somebody said, if you believe in God, why you don't serve him? I struggled. I trembled. I was moved. I was impacted again. And I had to pray for the first time in my life. God, help me. Help me. Help me. And I left that chain, that chain, a changed man. That is 42 years ago. When I went home, I, I felt different, but I couldn't explain it. I saw my friends and I said, you know, I'm going to said, no, I'm not going to today. They were surprised. <laughs> I couldn't explain it. I went home to my room, was quiet. My mother wondered what happened to me. My daddy said, boy, I, a, a young man, leave me alone. And there in the night, I confirmed my experience. So by the next day, I could say to my friends, I didn't come to dance because I am now a Christian. I didn't use Christian, I used roots man in Christ. <laughs> roots man in Christ. I said, no, roots man in Christ. If I said, I wish you want to see. I, I wish you want to see. I don't go to the class and say, look what I feel. Look what I And they all gave me three weeks. Three weeks is now 42 years. <laughs> I fell in love with Jesus. I fell in love with his church. And I knew that at that time nothing at all was more important to me than for me to give my life to Jesus Christ. That's why I must tell you those who are refusing to go out. You don't have to do anything. You just have to live the life. Amen. You have to live the life. Amen. That's how you're peculiar. That is important. That's important because whether you realize or not, this is having some impact on somebody's life. The fact that you don't adorn yourself with jewelry. The fact that you don't paint up, paint up yourself. The fact that you don't dress a certain way. The fact that you walk a certain way, you go to certain places, you don't eat certain things. Whether you realize or not, that has an impact. And that's why I love my church. I love my church going to bed. Later on, I was to develop a theology, theological reasoning about why I love the church. I'll share some with you. Turn to Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Verse 13 to 18. This is viewed as the main rock of the church development. Where Christ ends up saying in verse 18, This is a rock, Peter. 
I'll build my church on this rock and nothing. Absolutely nothing shall prevail against it. Nothing. That's why I love my church and I stay in the church no matter what. Because no matter negative wives, no matter negative people, no matter bad leaders, no matter fornicators, no matter, no, no matter malicious people in the church, they could have shown me till the day they die. I don't care about that because I know that this church will prevail. That's why I love my church. You know what is that this text is used for many in the Catholic Church as the basis for establishing the papacy. You know that? They say that Peter is the rock and upon him, Peter, the church is built by Christ and I don't know what kind of nonsense that is. Jesus himself was also called Peter, almost Satan, son of God. Peter was to deny Jesus Christ. Peter was a feeble man, funny man. You don't think that he possibly could be saved, much less become the head of the church. Nothing like that. So I won't waste time with that. I'll tell you briefly what this is saying. This is not saying that Christ is a rock. Whoa, 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 Lord. That's not what it's saying. It is saying that based upon the statement that Peter made. Well, I'll read it for you. Verse 17. Look at verse 17 with me. Look at verse 17. Verse 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it. What is, what is it that was revealed to Peter? That Christ was the Messiah, the Son of God. Isn't that so? <laughs> I not reveal it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Notice what he's talking about. Notice what is the subject of the matter. Notice what is the meat or the main focus, main attention of Christ here. He's talking about the statement which Peter got. That's it. it. When I go to 18, he says, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, any English teacher would have logically say that it must be the statement, and the statement must be the rock. That's what I believe. That Jesus is saying upon your statement that I am the Messiah, the son of the living God, will I build my church and nothing shall prevail against it. Yes, it's true that Christ is a rock. Yes, we learned in 1 Corinthians where it says that the, Jesus was a rock which the Israelites follow. But in context, in context, this is not what he's saying that Jesus is a rock. He's saying that the statement that Peter made is a rock. I will build my church upon it and nothing shall prevail again. Yes, the church is built upon Jesus Christ. Yes, the church is built upon faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. The church is built upon the confidence in Jesus Christ. That's what I believe. 
That's why I love my church. Christ says that nothing shall prevail against it. Nothing shall prevail against it. Do you understand what that means? That all through the centuries, nothing shall prevail against it. No persecution shall prevail against it. We have persecution against the church today, but it's not at heart as in yesteryear. When brothers hated brothers and fought against them. When preachers took their members and burned them. When the church took up vengeance against all those who had a certain beliefs. The church was in chaos. Because you have some members who were proclaiming faith in Christ who were in hiding. In hiding. They couldn't stand up and proclaim that they were Christian. They couldn't dress like Christian. They couldn't behave like Christian. They had to hide the fact that they were Christian. And lo and behold, the head of the church then was issuing vengeance against them. Issuing death against them. The church then would burn them. Oh mercy. I, 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 sometimes I get I'm trying to cook. <laughs> and when I look at fire, touch me. <laughs> I trouble, trouble, trouble. They used to take Christians and take them and tie them to stakes. Light them on fire. When they hear singing, burn them. <laughs> Lord of mercy. How could you stand up today? You are sitting comfortable in church. Are you talking about people here to, you know, you know, you don't know what hate is yet. The persecuted. I saw documentaries showing the, the, the implements of torture that they face. They would stretch stretch the people them until they were torn apart. They would make coffin for them where nails were in the lid of the coffin so that when it shut and then they would be pierced. They would throw them in arenas where wild animals, tigers, Lion, bears would attack and tear the Christians apart. And I wonder how could the church survive in those days? But lo and behold, the more them blood swell, the more they multiply. <laughs> I still love, I still love watch cowboy show. Started by my mother. Mother used to have me in theater every day. And she loved cowboy show. And she said, Cowboy and Indian. And she said, well, What's the Indian then? If they kill one Indian, ten, ten years up. You kill one Indian, you see a, a thousand up on the hillside. It's not a to kill them. It's like you're watering them, the, 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 the flesh and the grow. So to one the Christians, the more they kill the Christians, oh Lord of mercy, the church grow. The church was a force that could not be stopped. The church was a force that was intending to master up everything. The empires and the emperors tried to 
stifle them and try to shut them up and try to put them aside. But lo and behold, the more they try, the more they go. <laughs> Why? Because Kai says that nothing, absolutely nothing, shall reveal against it. When the persecution didn't work, the devil tried a different method. <laughs> different method. He brought in the element of compromise. You say compromise is not bad. <laughs> That's not bad. But it was. Because when you are being persecuted, you know definitely they are the enemies and we are the good. You know that. But when you compromise, your enemies are within. And the enemies try to shut down things from a different side. The aim of it was to go to the point where you say right is wrong and wrong is right. Isn't that what is happening today? Well, well, the Seventh-day Adventist church that I grew up in is not the church that it is today. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. You might be vexed. You might be upset. But I have to tell you the truth. It's not the same thing. True, you have bad people. True, you have malicious people. True, you have intemperate people. But nowadays, you have leaders who are leading the people astray. Leaders who bring bad doctrine. Bad wine, bad, bad wine you call it. Oh, gosh, I guess. <laughs> who tell you things that they know is not true? Who teach you things that are erroneous? The Bible says that I like people who are leading the people astray. Woe unto them. They teach things with, what I call it, some of our ears. Eh? Itchy ears. Itchy ears. Oh, Lord have mercy. Itchy ears. They tell you things that are amazing. We are not in the church. Where this is taught, thanks be to Pastor Wilson. Thanks be to him. Pastor Wilson is a simple man. Yeah. Humble man. He just teaches you where God teaches him. But a lot of our Seventh-day Adventist churches are out of this world. Do you know that there are seven Adventists who teach that Jesus is not God? Seven Adventist church. Who teach that Jesus is not God? Jesus was just a good man who taught good things, but apart from that, he was not God. Do you know that there are Adventist preachers who believe that certain parts of the Bible is nonsense. Must not be studied, must be discarded. And leave you wondering as you read which part. <laughs> which part can you read? Which part can you understand? And you come to Ellen White, there are Adventist preachers today who don't believe in Ellen White. 
Who tell you to go astray? That is nonsense. Who tends to lead you astray with foolish arguments? That tells you that to follow the principles of health is nonsense. To obey the doctrines, nonsense. To follow what you were taught before, foolishness. To be in an untraditional way. That's why I believe and I still love my church. No matter what you may say, I still believe it. You may call me old fashioned. You may call me out of date. You may call me out of sync. You may call me foolish. But you stay there. I am still tied to my church. And I still love my church. What is it that I wish about my church? I wish about everything else that my church would be like what God intends it to be. Holy priesthood. Holy nation. Obeying the doctrines of God. Following what you were taught. Don't follow the people who tell you that you can't wear anything, that you can't do anything. And still be a Christian. No, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What you do is an influence. What you do impact people. What you do can lead people astray and make people live. I used to wear bangles when I was at, when I wore them bangles. Yeah, bangles. When I became an Adventist, I took it off. And I also learned that Adventists don't wear jewelry. And I don't wear jewelry up to today. I don't wear it. No matter who I wear it, there are Adventist preachers who wear ring today. <laughs> they can't stay with them ring. They can't stay with them ring. They'll have to explain how is it that they led people to discard what God has instituted. There are many Christians today who go to theaters. <laughs> who eat anything. My, my daughter, in fact, my entire children, three of them, worked in higher at some time. Worked in higher. And they could tell me, Pastor, they say, Daddy, You'll be surprised who come up. I have a order bacon, order ham. <laughs> I, I, I won't tell you because probably your feet will be shaking. They eat these things freely. They don't have any problem with eating it because they were not taught it. But I believe that it is important that we know what we can eat and what we cannot eat. Amen. Amen. Tell me nonsense about this and that and that. It better you see uh, no, I say too bad, no, I say. You need to be obedient to God's call. We need to be like a traditional Adventist who worship on Saturday and who eat pork. (laughs) 
I ha sometimes we have dinner, dinner, dinner. When you call it cookout or something like that, pack up. I group group dinner. So we might go to a restaurant, a buffet restaurant, and order food. And I'm surprised many times what the order is coming from some people who are Seventh-day Adventists. Seventh-day Adventists still eat crab, you know? You know that? Some, some. Some still eat crab. Some still eat shrimp. <laughs> Lord have mercy. come upon us, this COVID-19 <laughs> is just a test for us to see what will happen when God brings the shaking. Most everlasting. When God brings the shaking, mercy upon us. Mercy upon us. If you don't know what the shaking means in Adventism, it means a time when the church will be rocked upside down and the bad will sift in time. Sift in time. Sift in time. I am dying for it, that time to come. Then we'll know who is who. Then we'll know who is just wearing the suit. Then we'll know who is just wearing the dress. Then we'll know who is just playing Christians. The sifting time will come. Hmm. Most everlasting. Despite all of this, I still love my church. I still love my church. Because I realize if God didn't love it, 
will be dead already. If God didn't love it, no us would be here today. If God didn't love his church or myself, we would never be alive. One more second. One more second. We'd all be dead. I've told the story already of Hurricane Gilbert. Gilbert happened in 88, 1988, Jamaica. I was still living in Jamaica then. I was living in a place called Barnes Heights. When the hurricane came, the hurricane wreaked havoc. I could look ahead from the veranda and see the hillside ravaged. Ravaged. I mean, all green disappeared. Ravaged. I could look slightly to my left down below and I could see the buildings all the roofed. Roof's gone. I could look at my right hand and see zinc. Zinc. You know what zinc is? Zinc flying around in the wind. Whirling around in the wind. <laughs> I could look at the back and hear the trees falling. Tree drop down. The sound recover. Then suddenly it stopped. No wind. No rain. No nothing. I come to me it like it done. So I, I drop my chair. One of my chairs from a dining table set. Went and put it on the veranda and sit down to survey the destruction. <laughs> My wife, <laughs> being a woman, she said, Go and feel what we are doing. We are going outside for. Come back inside. Come back inside. I said, What? I want to see what I want. What about I want? Yes, sir. No, okay, done. <laughs> okay, done, man. That's cool, man. She said, come inside, man. Come inside. And while I was there contemplating her foolishness, the wind start again. And the dry spell ended. And the star returned. From a different direction. Just as fierce, just as ferocious as before the storm was on us again, we barely could have got a chance to go back inside. That has taught me a very important lesson. That in this church, which has undergone persecution, which has undergone turbulent times, which has undergone wind and rain and buttressing of storm. We are now in the cooling period. The eye of the storm. Whereby those who are foolish Those who are careless, those who don't understand will relax and cool themselves just like you. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. Not realizing that while you are there cooling yourself and probably sleeping, the star is about to return. 
I'm with you from other direction. I'm with you hard. How will you stand? How will you stand? How will you stand in that day? When persecution starts again, it will start again. The Bible says so. The Bible says so. It will start again. We are in the time of trouble where this world has never seen, the Bible says. We are in the time when your children will hear you. Your loved ones will hate you. People that have been nice to will not be nice with you. People that you are comfortable with will not be comfortable with you. They will hunt you down. They will betray you. They will crucify you. They will persecute you. How will you stand in that day? How will you stand? I'll tell you how I stand. I stand because I love my church. And I've been assured by Jesus that nothing will prevail against this church. I'm told in the scriptures that when the storms of life are raging, stay in the ship. Don't jump over. Don't cast yourself over to the sea. Don't be afraid. Fear not. Fear not, I've overcome the world. Fear not, I will see you too. Fear not, I will show you victory. Fear not. So when that time comes, my brethren, hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. Shall we stand to sing the closing song? Church has one foundation. It's Jesus Christ. Three, four, eight. Number three, four, eight.
I give God thanks for his church. Not only has it saved me, but it has given me a new life. That's why I continue to worship God's church. That's why I continue to believe in Jesus Christ. I continue to hold on. Hold on to the faith that I was once taught. Hold on to the faith that is coming from the scriptures. Hold on to the faith that we need to hold on to. Don't worry about the many people who will abandon this. Don't worry about the many people who will encourage and teach you and preach at you to, to give up. Don't worry about the, the, the time of thoughtfulness and downwardness and negativity. Forget all of that. We serve a mighty God. We are in a mighty church. And no matter what the devil may plot, no matter what the devil may try, no what the devil may lay before us, we are assured victory in Jesus Christ. I would like to declare, help me, O oh Jesus, to be faithful to thee until the end. If that's your desire, let me see you. Praise be to God. Our Father and our God, we thank you so very much for having saved us. We thank you that you rescued us from the life that we are living. And you have brought us to new life. New life in Christ. Sometimes we may have trouble. Sometimes we may have difficulties. Sometimes we may have worries. Oh God, but help us to realize that you gave your life for us. And no matter what you send for us, you are able to deliver. You are able to set us free. So help us and give us strength, oh God. Give us strength and zeal to hold on to the faith that we once believed in to hold on to the tradition that we long believe in, to hold on to that which is true and that which is right and that which is righteous coming from the scripture. Oh God, help us please that we will be among those who will be saved when you come. Help us that we will be among those who can declare, welcome Christ Jesus, welcome. We have long waited for you. We have long waited for you. And we are happy to receive you. And to mercy. Oh God, bless us now, we pray. Sanctify us, we pray. Set us apart and equip us to face the final frontier. For we pray all these mercies in Jesus' name.